Ain't, ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. Of course, when we, whenever we have the dating pool diva in the building and the diva diaries, we always end up having conversations that are, you know, spirited and uh, we get excited. And they don't always, you know, they don't always have something directly to do with what we're talking about. Uh, but they always end up being spirited. And just now, uh, it's definitely no, uh, it's definitely no exception. We were talking about the movie Why Did I Get Married. And we were talking about the characters in the movie that got on our damn mer- nerves. Uh, and, of course, one of those characters, for me, ended up being the Sharon Leal character, which was the character that was married to Tyler Perry. So that's kind of what we were talking about. So if you heard us kind of coming out of the break and, and, and fussing and stuff like that, you know, and then the sisters, they was talking about uh, they were talking about uh, Malik Yoba getting killed at the end. So, uh, so that was a trip. I want to get two. I want to get some comments in from the Mix LR page. And then we're going to move on to the data. Put even the diaries. Hakeem. What's up, brother? Hakeem. Kim said 42 million people watched the last hour of the manhunt for the accused Boston Marathon bomber, and he says his name, which I won't do on this show. Uh, ain't no profit in keeping it real. News is business. Don't bring in the ratings. You will get canned. Uh, notice how you have to be attracted to be a news anchor. Do you watch the news on Spanish channels? I do, and there's a reason for that. It's not to learn Spanish. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, you got to always give it to Akeem because he keeps it very real. Uh, we got Santine Nathan that says, what up to Big Road? Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. It's time to pass the baton over to the lady of the hour. We got the day and pool diva in the building and she's gonna lead us in this segment the diva diaries what you got girl man let me play your music go well, ahead go ahead um, your music I, gonna be I playing i wanted to recap on our topic from saturday we had at the dp love revolution forum and we had a really good time dating pool love revolution forum and we talked about how you survive the single hiatus And this is the um, question that I posed to the group. A hiatus is an extended period of time between one situation and another situation. In this case, the period between a past romantic relationship and the next romantic relationship. If you are older than 25, chances are you've had at least one hiatus in your lifetime. Are you currently in a hiatus? If so, are you surviving it? If not, Did you survive the hiatus? How can you make yourself more marketable for the next person that you end up dating? So the first question is, if you're single, do you survive the hiatus? Wow. So whoever, I, well, whoever, it's your, 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 your segment. So who you want to hear from I'm first? Ruben, big Ruben. You want to hear I'm from Ruben first? Okay. I'm very single. It's okay. beautiful. How do I survive? I mean, it's about me. You know, I got to take care of me first. You know, when, when it comes down to it, you just got to take care of yourself and things just work out. If you choose to put yourself out there, which eventually I may choose to do, then I will. But when it's all said and done, until you're happy with yourself, you, know, you can't expect somebody else to be happy for you or with you. Brandy, what's your thoughts? Brandy will be next. Um. Okay, yes, I am in a hiatus right now. Am I surviving it? I haven't killed myself. No, I'm just playing. Wow. Um, <laughs> no, nah, I'm good. I, I used to work a whole bunch of jobs, so I really didn't have time to think about it. But now that I've lo- well, I don't work at one of the places anymore, but um, now that I have more time to myself, I'm feeling better about myself. This is a four-year hiatus that I've been on. So I've learned a lot about myself, what I do like and what I don't like and what I will and will not stand for. So it's been good for me. Okay. Calm right. Banks, we know uh, yeah, you are married guys too. I you know, know you've you, had we, a hiatus we, in we, your we, lifetime. We are the yeah, married my people. Hiatus is, is in, in, in things that you wouldn't understand. Relationship things. So, you know. <laughs> I think I understand. <laughs> <laughs> that's another that's another part. That's that's another part. We, we know I about that. No but shout out to Mrs. J and Mrs. B. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> do, okay. you okay. do your jobs, girls. You better do your jobs. Yeah, buddy. Wow. Okay. I, I went there. Don't be wowing. Wow. I went there first. So okay, this about? is Don't not the wow. sex hiatus. This is the relationship oh, wow. hiatus. I, I, 10 years in the game you know i can't i don't have a hiatus anymore. but like He's i said in the game. before that before that i was still with some <laughs> I, I, I had i had friends 
I had friends before. You know what though? All right, I'll, I'll say. I'm so glad that I'm still single. I'll say this because this this is what I said at the forum uh, the other day. There's certain people, uh, myself included, um, that just we don't do the whole by yourself thing all that good. Right. You know what I mean? And you know, when I was a kid, young guy, you know, particularly in high school, you know, I always had somebody who I called my girlfriend. Of course, the older you get, the more serious it becomes. Uh, but I would say from the time I was, say, 15, 16 years old, which was 20 plus years ago, I might have gone a year, maybe two, when I didn't have a girlfriend or a wife. You know, so as far as a single hiatus, you know, I just never really had one. Right. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So it's hard for me to really get into it. And then when we start talking, you know, I don't want to take any of the ladies thunder. But there was a sister at the dating pool forum the other day that spoke a little bit about abstinence and how, you know, she's given herself to God. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you know, my instinct was to say something crass. Okay. So I had to, you know, I had to not say something crass because I'm thinking to myself, like, again, now, now I'm restraining myself from saying something crass. Now, I mean, the thing is, you got to decide what that hiatus means to you. Right. You got to decide what it is you can live with and what you can live without. Mm-hmm. And if you can live without there being any kind of companionship, whether it be mental, physical, spiritual, at all. Right. From the opposite sex or the same sex, if that's how you roll, then so be it. But if you're one of those people where, let's say you want part of it, let's say that you want some physical, but you're not necessarily into any of the other stuff, or let's say you want the other stuff, right? but you're not into the physical, you got to figure out first what you want, mm-hmm. and then you need to figure out if there's somebody that's around you that can be down with you the way you want it. And if not, then... Doesn't mean that you reassess what your needs are, mm-hmm. but if you can't find anybody to meet those needs, then you might actually need to do that if you're unhappy. If you're happy, then right. who are the rest of us to even offer an opinion? Well, I'm going to pose another question to the two single people here. The second part of the question was, how do you um, make yourself more marketable or attractive to, to other people? If you're looking to date, how are you making yourself more marketable for the next person? I think this was said in the dating pool um, forum the other week, which was um, making yourself more marketable. As for me, I'm once I get out there and start dating or looking for someone, I, actually, I wouldn't even do that. I would just go out more often. If they like what they see, cool. If they don't, then keep it moving. I, I believe I'm cool with myself. Right. If I see a problem with myself, I'll fix it myself. But as far as trying to get somebody else attention drawn to me, what they if they don't like it already, then there's no need. I don't, I don't need to change anything about me just to get a man because it's not going to be like that all the time. This right here, right now, this is going to be who like you this are. all. Right. Right. So. We're getting a shout out on the Ain't No Half Step on Marcus J fan page on Facebook from S.Y. Butler. She's saying peace to y'all. She was at the forum, of course, on Saturday and she's saying she had a great time fellowshipping with y'all so we had a great uh, time with her thank yeah, you for coming out definitely she's uh definitely been a good fan to our show and the other shows on legacy internet radio so uh we like to call her Cy butler but uh peace to you sister thank you for your support big robe uh i think it's uh i think it's a fair question uh that the dating pool diva miss charisma has just asked with regards to do we do anything differently to market ourselves to make ourselves more dateable i guess is is probably my word i don't know if that's a good word Mm -hmm. charisma would you say that's a fair word that's a fair um do you do anything different or are you more like brandy do you just keep it real with who you are within yourself and say that prospective people are to get in where they fit in would you? Because I, I got an opinion on this. You know, I'm I, you know I'm, I'm I'm not in a single hiatus, but I got an opinion on this. But I'm curious to hear what yours is after having heard from what Brandy's is. Wow! And we're gonna get you two girls, man. Yeah, I definitely. I mean, I guess. I I guess honestly, I can honestly say, since probably I was 22 ish, 
I really haven't marketed myself as far as putting myself out there, that sort of thing. Because you know what my thing is? I have my job. I also go out with friends and stuff like that. Not that I'm in the public a lot, but I'm in the public right now for me enough. And when I get, I guess my thing is, I really, I really never had to really market myself. You know, when I saw something I liked, you know, to a point, I went after it in one way or another. I've never really sat there, you know, made myself look like a saw a billboard and be like, hey, you know what, I'm single, ready to mingle, let's get it going, yada, yada, yada. That's not my thing. Um, and I guess my, I am, and I'm attracted to people who are not so flamboyant. So for me, it's flamboyance to me is a negative to a point because if you put yourself out there out there and I see you and you know you put yourself out there to me like that yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> then how do I not know you put yourself to everybody like that and that's not the type of person I want because that's not the type of person that I would personally get along with dating pool David why don't we get your opinion on this one okay um, I guess I, I agree with you guys you do have to you know just be yourself love yourself growing yourself but at the same time you got to kind of analyze and critique yourself you know and I've kind of taken a step back outside of myself I've gotten a lot of feedback from other people and people have said well you look mean all the time you don't smile enough and so now I'm trying to find more reasons to smile just naturally smile not anything fake or phony but find more reasons to smile so I am more approachable and attractive to other people. Brandy. Well, see, I, I think we said something about that the other time. Well, I've had people actually approach me, why are you looking so mean? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Your problem, your problem could be attractive. Some people liked it. Yeah, they found it as a challenge, so they went after what they found to be challenging, and they liked my evil look. So, I mean, it depends on the person. But I you, know what I, you, know what I well, you know what I oh. see about that? You, you know, like, I, I'm not out there looking for nobody, and nobody's looking for me. But when we see pictures of each other, you know, I usually get the like put a picture on Instagram or Facebook, whatever. I always get more of a response from the pictures where I'm smiling mm -hmm. and the pictures where I'm not smiling. And my na my natural comfort level is to not be smiling, you know, but I always get people who want to say something negative when I'm not smiling like ah oh, you look so mean whereas when I am smiling that's when I get like a bunch of likes when I'm not smiling I don't and it's funny because I think we're naturally drawn to people who look pleasant about the face right. whether well, you know whether the pleasant tree is a smile or not a frown because their straight face is more pleasant than a frown root well see you know and that's the funny thing I the funny thing is I've got an exact opposite because I probably smile more than probably everybody in this room. Consistently. You know, I do. And it's like, you're always happy all the time. I'm like, wow, I'm sorry. I didn't know it was a curse for me to be happy all the time. My bad. Maybe I'll find something to be mad at. You know, and that's, and it's weird. It's just like, people, I guess, expect people not to be happy in this society, in this day and age. I can walk around with a smile on my face. I can speak to every person I see, and I'm completely cool with it. However, other people are just like, why are you talking to me? And it's just, it's weird because I was brought up and raised that you smile and if you want to talk to somebody, you, you speak and you say, hey, how you doing? Like I can walk down the street, hey, how you doing? Fine. And I get to look like, you talking to me? I'm just like, whoa, I'm sorry. My bad. Do I look like an alien or something? I mean, let me know. I got something growing on my head other than hair, you know? I mean, but I think what it is, is I'm not saying people like me. I'm just saying that. A smile is not expected a lot in this society. So when you see it, it's almost like, wow, they still make you, you know? And for me, it is one of those things where I'm just like, look, my thing is, I always keep it real. You like me, you don't like me. But it's either going to be one way or the other with me. You're either going to hate me or you're going to like me. And I'm not going to change for you. I'm not going to change for anybody else. So that's, that's a you issue. If you don't like me for me, because when it's all said and done, I go to sleep and wake up the next day and, and cool. 
Well, 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 I, <laughs> but I ain't got none of that. Well, I say this. I have two things to say real quick. One thing was, for the people listening, if you find somebody that you are attracted to but they frown all the time, use that as your challenge. I used to work in the liquor store, so I used to be mad all the time because I had to walk and get the liquor, and I'm dealing with these drunk people all the time. So, How are you with, mad in a liquor store? That's spirits I'm, all around you. You, you can't drink little, those. You got that, five hours. But that's why she was mad because she took it all looking. She could be drinking. And then you got drunk people Man. coming in all the time. But some people use that as an opportunity to say, oh, well, why are you mad today? What's going on? What happened to you? That was their opportunity to get the foot in and start speaking to me and maybe try to, you know, introduce themselves and all that. Now, as far as walking down the street and smiling at people, I have learned the hard way. Some people use that thinking that that's a foot in the door. Oh, she likes me because she smiled at me. Some people aren't right in the mind, so they use that as, oh, let me holler at it because she smiled at me. And that's, sometimes that's why I just look down at the ground. Don't even <laughs> I want to add something to something you just said. A lot of times I would walk around frowning because I, I figured that wall would close out not only, you know, it would close out the people that I don't want to deal with, but it also closes out the people that I would, you know what I'm saying? So it kind of works against you, you know, and when you smile all the time, you're going to get the people that you don't want in your circle, you know what I'm saying? And that's the reason why I say just be yourself and keep it real, because right. if you are natural, like Ruben, for example, is a naturally, is naturally smiling by his own admission, whereas me, I'm not naturally smiling by own, my own admission. I have people tell me, like, why you look so mean? You got a nice smile. You should smile more. And okay, but if I don't feel like smiling, I'm not. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But I guess as someone who would potentially be in a position to counsel someone who is in the dating pool, and I know that a pleasant face, a smile, is more likely to attract attention, my question would be to the three single people in the room, understanding what you just said, Charisma, about how you need to be careful with how much you smile because you don't necessarily want to attract the wrong people. My response to that would be, why would we be contrived by something as simple as a facial expression? Would it not be something that would be better? Would we be better served to just be organic with that? Mm -hmm. And if you happen to be walking through the mall and your face look like, you know, you're about to punch somebody in the face or stab your husband after you've been married for mm -hmm. 40 years, like the lady we talked about earlier. But seriously, if, if you're more of a not smiley person, then just be you. You know what right. I mean? Like, right. I'm more apt to side with be yourself as opposed to being contrived. Right. I mean, I that, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, and there'll be times where maybe you happen to think about something when you're walking in the mall and it tickle you to death. You just start smiling. And that might be the moment where mm -hmm. he actually walks out like he like the one when he comes up, like the light being shining on him and you hear the sound. Oh. <laughs> you know, he, he, just, he just happens to be walking up when you think about that moment you had with you know you know I got what a man what a man playing in the background so what a man might have been on your mind right. but the man might be walking up because he's seen that smile that what a man put on your face but I mean that that's just me like I, I don't see how you confront right it's just not it's just not how I do now it, big room you had something I think I think this day and age and I, I feel like society has a lot to do with the way we date and we not date and all this stuff. Society has put people in such a defensive position in which, like you said, you walk down, you may not be smiling, you may not be frowning, but no expression is always looked at as a negative expression. So instead of being happy with life and just being happy i mean i can speak from this because this is just my deal i guess mm -hmm. it's just like you know you walk down and you automatically just have a shell automatically boom all right that's one more one, that's one more line of defense i get to go through you know if they choose to try to go through that and that's them or if they choose not to they just keep going i mean it's just one of those things like just because i smile all the time does not make me lack of a shell it's just one of those things that is is almost like a, a 
a trigger of sort, I guess. I guess that's what I'm saying. I got a couple of hits on the MixLR page. Peace to the MixLR fans. We got Desiree Monique. A smile is just a smile. Don't take it for nothing else. Yep. Uh, which I agree with 100%. I think the sisters do, just based upon their reactions to that comment, I can see their faces. Uh, Hakeem, uh, uh, I'm a sucker for a pretty smile, which I, I agree with that too. Uh, he says, drop it, Marcus J. A smile doesn't make you soft. It doesn't make you susceptible either. Rube is kicking it right now too. So he's agreeing with you. Uh, I'm not sure if he's agreeing with me or he thinks I need to smile more. Hakeem, clarify that for me, uh, and I'll get that comment. I think uh, smile I'll, get, more, I'll get that. I'll get the comment on. But I think the essence of what my comment is, and, and I'm not sure I understand where he's coming from. But Hakeem, hit us back. Let me know exactly what you mean by that. But my thing is, as long as it's organic, yeah. you know what I mean. Like I, I, I'm just not one for people doing things that are not natural and, and, and fake. You know what I mean, like. If if doing certain things to make yourself physically presentable, because we talked about that a little bit before, you know, do you have to make yourself remarkable? Anytime you're doing, okay, Hakeem's telling me he actually agrees with me, so he, he just clarified he's agreeing with me. Uh, anytime you have to do something extra, that's where you lose me. I ain't in the extra. So if natural is you, then be natural. Do what you got to do. You ain't got to do the extra stuff with your right. hair. You ain't got to do the extra stuff. I mean, I do like nice nails, so if you got jacked up fingers, you, you might want to do something with that. <laughs> but, but in all seriousness, like, with going back to the smiles, like, don't be, like, you know, winking and, you know, everybody <laughs> remembers, you know, that right there. You know what I'm saying? Or back in the 70s, you used to be, like, the one eye wink. You know what I mean? Like, don't be doing all that. that. That's, that's real whack. That's very whack. Like you, like the dude you see, there was a dude in my neighborhood when I was growing up on Arlington Avenue, not Arlington, on Wilkinson Avenue in Jersey City. This cat named Cool Breeze. And every time we, that was his name. I don't even know what his real name. It might, it, it might have been like, you know, Lester Jenkins the third or something. I don't freaking know. But his name was Cool Breeze. That's what we called him. And every time he saw him, you saw Cool Breeze, he would always, like, like Brandy just did it. But seriously, that's what he would do. He would do, like, the, the, the point at you. And yeah. then he didn't even wink his eye. Like, you know what I'm saying? And he'd do that. And, What's like up, man? You know what I mean? Like, you know, he'd wink one eye. What's up, man? And it's just. That's extra cool breeze, and the fact that your name is Cool Breeze is already extra. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, see, I might actually like that because it shows he has a sense of humor. That ain't no know? sense of humor. <laughs> and it's funny. That ain't no sense of humor. <laughs> that ain't no sense of humor. That's funny now because we're, because it is funny to talk about it. But if you in a room, somebody hit you with that, you like. Mm. But just to, you know, yeah. to, to I mean, this is something that stayed with me. I moved I moved off of Arlington Avenue in Jersey. Excuse me. I moved off to Wilkinson Avenue. In Jersey City, because I do. Well, no, but I moved <laughs> off of that when I was I was six. Okay, when I moved off of that, but I remember Cool Breeze. This, this, we moved in 1980. Okay, this was 33 years ago. I still remember Cool Breeze. That was cool in the 80s. This was 1970s, 79. <laughs> You know what I mean? And Cool Breeze doing this to everybody in the neighborhood. The little kids and everything on big wheels and everything. So you know when he saw a sister that caught his eye. Brandy, what was he doing? Come on, tell me. What was he doing? What was Cool Breeze doing? You weren't there, but you already know now what he was doing. He was going like this. What's up, Brandy? <laughs> it's crazy, man. It's, he's, out of, he's out of his mind. I think there was another issue that we brought up um, at the dating pool regarding, okay. um, at the forum regarding how natural women mm -hmm. tend to have a harder time finding someone compared to I'll just go ahead and the fake ones, the weaved out right. nails, fake hair, fake eyes, fake everything. So I don't know if you wanted to I talk about that. I think we are perceived as natural sisters, especially as being strong and, you know, too strong or too intimidating or what I've heard that so many times. I don't know how to count it. I mean, it's ridiculous. And I'm like, I'm not that intimidating. Like, I'm a nice person. But because I'm so-called strong and intimidating they don't want to talk to me or they were afraid to talk to me and maybe something i did made them feel comfortable to talk to me go ahead uh Carlton before we Banks. do that before, you got before we to go to carlton we got two comments uh that's why butler she's just laughing out loud uh and uh hakeem is actually agreeing with you charisma Carlton banks what you got man did you say just because your hair is natural that you're strong we're intimidated by a strong woman 
Is that, that is not that? at all okay. what I just that, said. You weren't at clarify. all listening what did you say? to me. I just, need, I just want a clarification on what you said. Cause like what I, said, I said I was, was... I want to be correct. What I said was, I have been approached uh-huh. by different guys who have said to me okay. that I am strong and intimidating and I wasn't going to talk to you, but it's something that I did that made them feel comfortable to talk to me. That's what I said. And let, I think I made it clear. Let me, let me do this because I think even though we are getting a little bit off of what we originally should be talking about but i you brought you brought up something that reminded me of a conversation that we had when we had the diaries the last time and i had had discussions with some sisters mostly sisters a couple of people and even a couple of brothers on the heels of the last conversation that we had and i hope you allow me to take the liberty just for a moment if we need to come back to this we will but um because i have you here in a public forum i want to give you an opportunity to address some of the comments that i received based on the last thing and like i said what we just this area the conversations what brings it